Okay, number two in the uh, insider secrets on building a top performing sales team, never devalue orientation. What do you mean e by that? Easy to do. I was talking with one of our folks here about this, and, and, and I took a look at our own company, and our, uh, our orientation could be a lot better for new employees. Uh, we've got about 18 people. You know, he said it's actually it's 18. We at one point we had 25, huh. uh, but with the nature of consolidation, electronic delivery, we don't need as many. Uh, and she said to me, you know, we could really do a lot better here with our orientation. And I said, tell me more about that. She said, I didn't know we did this or did that. Here's what happens with smaller companies: it's easy not to take the time to put something together. And here's the orientation. Here's your desk. Here are the car keys. Here's the desk uh, uh, that you're going to be working at. Let me give you keys for the office, and here's your code. Have a nice day. <laughs> and here's the prospect list. Yeah, here's a prospect <laughs> list. Start yeah. calling them, and here's you know here's your inventory of products to sell. Well, again, we could talk for two hours about the orientation program, but people need to know the history of the company, the culture of the company, what the expectations are of the company. Uh, what you're trying to accomplish, how do they do their job, how do they handle the computer, tell me about the internet, all of that stuff. Here's what I know. The best orientation I ever had was in the military, and I know you were in the military too. Well, if you count the Navy as being military. Uh, <laughs> but, thank, you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Bill. <laughs> but here's what I'm going to suggest to you. Did you get a great orientation when you got there? It may have been tough-minded on you. Oh, yeah, of course. Well, well I you mean, know what I, was expected? I, I mean, yeah. But uh, let me tell you something. This rather surprises me. Of all of all the seven things that we're going through here that, that, that are the secrets for having peak performance of your sales team, the orientation seems to be the biggest surprise to me. I don't now the rest of them we're gonna go through. It's to also the about. most overlooked. Well we're we're gonna be talking about sales systems and doing this and that and the other and all of those seem intuitively necessary. But I, I for the life of me don't understand why orientation makes that big a difference. I mean if you it seems to me if you've got a peak performer and you've got somebody who is tough who's got a track record you've you know you screen them well why in the world is it so important to show them where every little nook and cranny in the business is I mean, because what, if how does that make them a better salesperson if people don't know what to do or why they should do it they walk forward with a certain degree of trepidation no matter how much of a performer they are or he what's even worse they're so strong they go off in a direction and they violate the cultural prescriptions of the company Oh, it's a team thing is what you're talking about. It can about. be. It can be an individual thing. It depends on how many you hire. But if you take a look at large companies, I know people that have a, a seven-month training and orientation program. We've got a company right here uh, utilizing our conference center that they rented out for their people. Mm -hmm. They spent the first three weeks with an orientation. See, how can someone say, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to do that? Well, I mean, I, I understand the things about employees' handbooks and... And, and, and I, I just what I don't get is where, except I do get this business about from a team perspective, that that I, that an orientation. Would okay, be let, let me give you an example of this. Um, let's imagine that you go to a job and you're in a sales company. Right. Okay, how many? Because this is more than the protocol now. This is cultural. You ready? How many sales calls a week should you be on? What is the dress? What is the demeanor when you come in? What is the policy on vacations? How do you handle requests for vacations? How do you get into the computer? What's your access code? What do you do with the internet? How do you, what do you do with the intranet? What I'm telling you is the thing that will trip the superior performer up is they tend not to overly comply and then what they'll do is mea culpa for a while saying I didn't understand, I didn't know. Now. You as the sales manager, you want to let that go because you don't want to lose a potentially strong person. Your job as a sales manager is to remove every excuse for failure there is. You know what, you know what it struck me as orientation is a little bit like the checkoff list for a pilot of a plane. Yes. Getting ready to take off. I mean, he may know how to fly the plane, know how to take off, but all of the little checkoffs is are necessary to make sure you don't overlook something. And what you're basically saying then is that orientation is, in a sense, a, a an organizational checkoff list. Yes. So that 
then the person can perform at their peak level without anything getting in the way and something going Now what they're doing is they're concentrating on prospecting, right. positioning, okay. pre-call planning, I got you. getting in front of customers, asking you. the right questions, making you. an effective presentation. There's no I doubt about the rest of the stuff. I got you. Okay? Okay. Uh, have a sale. See, now, the next one seemed intuitive to me, but, but orientation took a while. All right. All right. Next one. Have a sales system in place. Uh, recent research from an independent organization, some information that we we really get from this organization indicated that the biggest failure out there is if there's not a sales methodology in place. In other words, what happens is people are not giving a, given a sales process that they can follow. So there's nothing to score them against. There's no continuity. You can't move people in and out of offices across whatever you have to do because they sell differently in Chicago from what they do in Des Moines. And so the sales methodology has to be there. Now, whether you use uh, any system, I have friends all over the country that teach different systems of selling. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any difference what the system is, but I invariably will ask sales managers in our symposiums that we run, how many of you think that you've got some salespeople out there winging it? And virtually every hand goes up. That's like saying, how do you fly the plane? Oh, I do it this way, he does it that way, mm -hmm. she does it this way. So in our case, for those who have been through it, we teach the impact system, which is investigate, meet, probe, apply, convince, tie it up. Investigate is positioning, prospecting, pre-call, planning. Meeting is developing trust and rapport early in the process. <laughs> Probing is asking the right questions to determine what they'll buy, when they'll buy, how they'll buy, and under what conditions they'll buy. Apply is presenting a solution both to and for the prospect that creates superseding value in such a way that there's no written, there's absolutely no way of them not being able to see how it applies. Convince is corroboration or social proof. People expect you to make claims, but they're impressed when someone else does. Tie it up is asking for the order. Furnish, uh, handling the paperwork and starting to, to, to handle the account. You're laughing. <laughs> no, I'm just amazed at how you pull all this stuff out like you do. It's well, remember, I wrote, I wrote that you know, a you long wrote time it, you ago. Wrote it. So, so what happens with our clients or our company, the methodology happens to be the impact system. Now think about this. Once somebody really understands how that works and you've got the right person and they understand what the corporate culture is like, how to operate, what's the right demeanor, et cetera, et cetera, they're in pretty good shape, but they have to be the real peak performer to begin with. But what if it, what if somebody comes to you and is a peak performer and comes from another place and has a different system? Then you teach them your system. And do you do you force them to use your Absolutely. system? Absolutely. I recommend that you force them to use it, and that's part of the interview process. You get them to agree to it. Whatever system you use, you can't have somebody out there doing something different from everybody else, particularly gotcha. if they go on joint calls or they become a manager and they say, this is hogwash, don't follow this. But a sales methodology is critical. The research that we have uh, access to tells us very clearly that that's the biggest single mistake out there in organizations. They either don't have a methodology or they don't hold someone accountable for following it. Conduct ongoing sales and product training. Yes. Doesn't surprise me. The problem is you're going to do product training anyway. Most sales managers think that sales training is product training. Yeah. yeah I sales it. training. Yeah. L let me give you a, an interesting, yeah, I, I understand. interesting yeah. bit of research. We've come up with some additional research that was done at Princeton that says in the first milliseconds is when someone draws a conclusion about mm -hmm. you. We should think it was 19 to 34. That's actually milliseconds. It's almost instantaneous. So that means that you have to be there on time, which means being early. That you have to be dressed one notch above your customer base, that you need to be positioned correctly because people pay attention to people. They really have something important to say to them. Think about all of that. That needs to be an ongoing process that sales managers teach. Uh, we have a, a new system called the sales year, and the sales year is 52 sales meetings and 52 audio messages with a leader's guide that tells the sales manager what to emphasize that week. Because what I know is sales managers have no trouble with the product knowledge. They have to scratch their head to find this kind of data about what to do with sales training. So it's ongoing sales skills and ongoing product knowledge and how do you integrate the two. And you have to do it on a regular basis. I'm going to suggest this to the sales managers. Never, ever have a sales meeting that does not have some form of sales training in it. I don't care if it's seven minutes worth. 
Because if you don't pay any attention to it, they see it as not being important. 